In this section, we're going to be considering critical path analysis, sometimes just referred to as CPA. Now, there are two different ways that I know of to do critical path analysis with drawing activity networks. One way is activity on node, and the other way is activity on arc. Now, exam boards do this in different ways. Um, so one exam board does it on activity on arc, for example. Another one will do it on activity on node. Now, the way that you build up the activity network in those cases is quite different. So um, for OCR MEI, we do activity on arc and not activity on node. So if you are coming from another exam board who do activity on node and you're looking at these videos, uh, it won't be useful to you. Okay, there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're just going to, it, it won't, it won't ap apply. So that's the first thing. We do activity on arc or activity on edge. Um, so what is critical path analysis really all about? Well, it's essentially about scheduling. So the idea behind, you know, if you've got a building project where you've got to lay the foundations, you've got to uh, build the walls, uh, you've got to put the windows in, um, obviously you would do them in that order. You can't put the windows in before you've laid the foundations. So there are certain activities uh, that will rely on other activities to have been completed. And those activities will have durations, so they will take a certain amount of time to complete. And what we want to do is we want to minimise the total build time, or the total completion uh, that will allow for all of those jobs to be completed. So that is what critical path analysis is really all about. We're going to start off by looking at precedence tables, which essentially tell you which jobs need to be completed in which order, or uh, which jobs um, rely on what other, what other jobs need to be done. Um, then we build activity networks, and the activity networks will be activity on arc, and that gives you a, um, a network visual of uh, what's going on. We then, from that point, um, we move into looking at uh, cascade diagrams or Gantt charts, which is another, another visual way of representing um, activities and uh, the amount of float that you have. And we've got um, three different types of float that we need to consider for OCR MEI. And we also have resource histograms, um, which essentially play a game of Tetris in allowing you to uh, schedule when activity should take place with the minimum number of workers. So there's quite a lot of stuff to get through in this section. Um, hopefully I'll go through enough examples really to kind of detail um, the different scenarios that you'll face. So uh, let's get started.